Welcome to the Wyoming Women's Business Center's 2020 webinar series. Today's presentation is Selling Skills, Understanding the Basics of Selling. I'm Christine Langley with the Wyoming Women's Business Center, and I'm going to be your speaker today. Just to clarify, this webinar is the first in a series of six webinars that are focused on selling skills. And so each session is going to be recorded and available for viewing to all registered attendees. So if for some reason you think you might miss one of the courses, no worries, you can catch up in the weeks that follow. So you'll notice the GoToWebinar control panel on the right side of your screen. I want to call attention to both the questions panel and the chat box. If you have any comments or questions during the webinar today, I'd like you to use those to communicate with us because everyone on the call is muted. Immediately following this presentation, we're going to launch a survey. And so we ask that you complete the survey because it provides us and our funding partners with valuable information. So as I mentioned, all participants are muted in order to minimize background noise. So once again, if you have any questions or comments during this presentation, go ahead and put those in the chat box or the questions panel. All right, so we're gonna get started with some quick information about the Wyoming Women's Business Center, and then we'll dive into our topic today and finish up with a little bit of time for Q&A at the end. Now, this is our new 30-minute format, and so we appreciate everyone joining us today during what might be your lunch break. The WWBC is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to enable and empower Wyoming entrepreneurs with a special emphasis on women who are economically or socially disadvantaged. And so we do that through four distinct programs. The first is our business counseling and training program, which is always free. The second is our microfinance programs, where we offer microloans as well as individual development accounts. And then the third is our artist development center. And we run that in conjunction with our Works of Wyoming store in downtown Laramie. And then lastly, we recently launched our COVID-19 support program, which is a special one-year program. So the webinar series that I'm hosting today um, and this entire Selling Skills series is actually brought to you by the microfinance program. And so I want to call special attention to our microloan program. We provide loans for those unable to get loans through traditional means anywhere from $500 up to $50,000. And so if you'd like more information on our microloan program, you can contact our office. All right, so diving into our topic today, let's just talk briefly about who can benefit from this selling skills course. You can see here I have a list of positions that would benefit. And just to give me a sense of my audience today, I'm going to launch just a quick poll so that I understand how many business owners I have on the call today versus maybe sales reps or sales managers. And so up on the screen, you're going to see here. Select your role in the company. Are you a business owner? Are you a sales representative or an account manager? Or are you a sales manager or director? And you maybe have some sales reps reporting up to you. Just want to get a quick sense. Most of the time we have lots of business owners um, because of course that's who we service at the Wyoming Women's Business Center. But occasionally we have some employees that hop on or independent contractors that hop on as well which is totally fine. Our training's always free and we welcome everybody. Okay, so let's just close this poll out and I'll share some results so you can see. Yep, so we have almost 80% of the people on the call today are business owners. And then a few sprinkled in of sales reps and sales managers. So welcome everybody. Thanks so much for attending. All right, so I always like to start by busting through some myths right up front. And so when you think about a sales professional in your own mind, I want you to think about what you see. And so I'd love to get some feedback in our chat box. Um, if you can enter into your chat or into the, that section, it should be on the lower half of that go-to control webinar panel. If you want to just enter in kind of what is your image of a sales professional? Is it the used car lot guy that's a little sleazy that we 
kind of shy away from when we go to make purchases, you know, or is it somebody in a suit that is presenting something professional, you know, or is it just the retail worker that you engage with on a regular basis when you go to any store? So just give us some ideas of kind of what you see in your own mind. Um, my hope is that by the end of this selling skills course, that you realize that this truly is a skill that can be learned, um, doesn't have anything to do with being an extrovert or an introvert. You can be either and still be incredibly successful at selling. All right, so here's a breakdown of the agenda for today. We're gonna start with the buying process and then I'll explain conditions of need. We're gonna finish up with the sales funnel along with some communication tips before I explain the eight step model that I'm gonna be training you on going forward. All right, so before we talk about actual selling, I always think it's important to understand what's really happening in the mind of a buyer. There's a process that every single buyer goes through when making a purchase. And that process is really detailed out on your screen right now. So let's use an example purchase to help make this make sense. Let's say I woke up yesterday morning to get dressed and I realized that the heel on a pair of my shoes um, was gonna wear out and maybe it was even broken. Okay, so because my heel was broken, because of that, I suddenly became aware that I had a need for a new pair of shoes. So step one in the buying process is awareness of need. Now, I didn't have time to order new shoes yesterday morning and I just grabbed a different pair, but I know that I'm gonna need that style of shoe soon. So now I've become interested in satisfying that need which is step two in the buying process. Now I already know the style of shoe I want and where I typically shop. So I do already have a preference in mind when I'm ready to shop. And once I decide to start shopping, whether that's online or in a store, I go through what's called a trial phase where I really wanna test out the product. And so I may do this by physically trying on several different pairs of shoes, or I may do it by looking at pictures and videos and reading online reviews. That process is gonna help me narrow down my options and decide if I wanna buy. So the next step is to actually make a commitment to purchase. And in this example of buying a pair of shoes, let's say I found a pair that I like and the price works for me, so I go ahead and I make that purchase. That means I've committed. And then the final step of the buying process is what we call advocacy. And this is the stage where I decide to share my purchase with others if I'm happy with it. So I may do this through leaving an online review, or I may post a picture of my new shoes on social media to show my friends, or I may even call some friends or family members and go, man, you're not going to believe this. I got this great pair of shoes at such and such store. You should check this out right? So it's offering up my advocacy and referral to another business. So now that we understand the buying process, let's talk about conditions of need. There are three common conditions that describe the reason that someone makes a purchase. So the first and the strongest condition is dissatisfaction with the current situation. The second condition is opportunity to improve the current situation. And then lastly, perceived deterioration in the current situation. So let's go back to my shoe example. If I needed a replacement pair of shoes the day I discovered I had a broken heel, then that would indicate that I was dissatisfied with my current situation right? Meaning I'm not happy right now. Now, if I became aware I needed a new pair of shoes, but really didn't need them right away, then that would be an example of an opportunity to improve the current situation. And then finally, if I noticed my heel was in bad shape and I knew I would likely need a replacement in the future, 
then that would be an example of perceived deterioration in the current situation. So if you have a business that has a simple sales process, meaning you typically collect money and get a customer after speaking with someone maybe once or twice, then you likely deal with the primary condition of need most of the time, right? People that are currently dissatisfied with their situation and they need to do something. Now, conversely, if you're in a business that requires a complex sales process that involves lots of engagements and explanations before you can actually collect revenue, then you're likely selling to either an opportunity to improve or perceived deterioration in someone's current situation. So let's take another quick poll and see where everybody's at. Which condition of need do you find yourself selling to most often. So the poll is going to come up and everybody just, you know, click one of these three. Do you find you're usually selling um, to people that want to buy right now, meaning they're currently dissatisfied? Or do you have people that are asking a lot of questions and you have to actually have to take them kind of through a sales process? That would mean opportunity to improve, you know, or is it perceived deterioration? This means it's kind of low on the need list. They just see it as something they could do in the future, and you're trying to sell to that. All right, great participation, guys. Give you a couple more seconds. All right, let's close this out and share our results. Okay, it looks like 15% of you um, are dealing with dissatisfaction with the current situation, um, but the majority on the call today are selling to opportunity to improve the current situation, which is a great reason um, to be getting some selling skills training because you definitely are going through a sales process if you're working with that second primary need. Okay, so we talked about the buying process and the different conditions of need as to why someone would decide to buy. So now let's flip it and let's talk about the sales funnel. Now the sales funnel is the process that you're driving a customer through on your path to closing a sale. And there are all different types of sales funnels that have been designed with different terms and descriptions. The reason that I use this one is because it resonates with a lot of different types of industries and it's fairly generic. Now, this particular sales funnel has four steps and those four steps are suspects, prospects, customers, and finally advocates. So let's just start at the very top, okay? The definition of a suspect is someone that doesn't know much about your business and you really don't know about them. You might purchase a lead list um, or maybe a person signs up for your e-newsletter, okay, those people would be considered suspects. The next stage in your funnel is what I call prospects. Now, prospects are people that know a little bit about your business and are potentially interested, and you have a little more information on them. Now, next, we hope that they become customers. And as you can see, I have customers broken into two groups, trial customers and consistent customers. Now, depending on your business, I'm sure you can categorize your customers all different ways, you know, kind of going down this funnel. And again, this is just showing you the basic sales funnel flow that happens in the sales relationship. Um, but if this is something you were going to introduce to employees or other people within your business, then you may want to customize this sales funnel to show the different stages that customers are going through when they're buying. The other reason that you would use this sales funnel within your company or within your organization is to describe where you're at in the sales process with a particular prospective customer, right? Are they a current customer and you're hoping to make them an advocate? Are they a suspect and you're going to drive them into your prospect funnel? Are they a prospect and then became a hot prospect and then became a customer, right? So there's all different ways that you can use this funnel in order to describe where you're at in the sales relationship. And then finally, at the bottom of the funnel, we see advocates. 
An advocate is a customer that provides you referrals and also positive reviews. And so your goal is to really drive suspects to become prospects, prospects to become customers, customers to become advocates. But what we realistically know about this sales funnel is that it's got holes, right? It has leaks in it. And so we only have an expectation that we're going to have a 25% closing rate between each grouping. So let's do a quick math exercise so that we can understand what that means. If I started with a lead list of, say, 100 people, that means that I'd have 100 suspects to begin with. But it also means if I have a 25% closing ratio between suspects and prospects, that only 25 out of those 100 would actually become valid prospects. Now, if my closing ratio, again, is 25% between prospects and customers, that means only six would actually become customers. And of those six customers, again, 25% closing ratio between customers and advocates, that would mean I'd end up with one advocate. So the reason that I review this is so that you understand while selling skills is really important and you can definitely help grow your business through effective selling skills, at the end of the day, sales often comes down to a numbers game. You have to have enough people at the top of your funnel to start with. And that's why businesses spend time and energy and money on what we call marketing strategies. So we're focused on everything that happens after you identify a suspect or prospect. That's what our course is going to be about over the next six weeks. Because marketing is everything you do to try and identify a suspect and prospect, while sales is everything you do after you've identified that suspect or prospect. So during this training, I'm going to assume that you have prospects. Okay, so I always like to cover some communication tips before we dive into training, because I find that when people are nervous or self-conscious, they often fall into communicating with what I like to call weasel words. Okay. It's really difficult to buy something from someone that describes their own products or services with terms like, well, maybe that might work for you, or it could possibly be a fit, or it might help you. Right. So I encourage you to take stock of the words you use when speaking with prospective customers and be sure that you're using language that portrays confidence and certainty. Right. So words like will definitely and absolutely. So I want to take a quick poll to just find out where you guys are at on this subject. So when I'm trying to sell, I, and then finish this sentence for me, always use power words and feel confident. Use power words until I get some sort of objection. Or do you struggle with confidence and often use weasel words? Now this poll is confidential, so I'm not outing anybody for answering. Just wanna get a sense of my audience here and where you guys struggle. Got about 65% of the vote in, so I'm gonna give you a little bit more time. All right, great. Thanks everybody, we'll go ahead and close this out and let's see where everybody's at. Okay, about 23% always use power words and feel confident. Yahoo, good for you, excellent. Um, we've got about 46% um, that do really well until you get an objection, very normal, right? And then we've got 31% uh, that struggle with confidence and, and use weasel words a lot. And that's why you're here. So we're gonna help you build your confidence um, over the next six weeks and get rid of those weasel words because you understand and know exactly what's coming next in your sales process and will even help you build some sort of a script so that you feel really comfortable in communicating. All right, so now that you understand the process that the buyer is going through and the sales funnel that you actually want to move your leads through, now it's time to understand the actual process of selling. 
So I want you to know upfront that there are all different types of selling models that are out there. Um, me personally, I started my career in sales, moved into sales management um, before I ended up in kind of C-suite uh, positions. Um, and of course, I'm an entrepreneur myself, and so I'm always selling. Um, but I've been trained in a five-step, a six-step, an eight-step, a 10-step, a 12-step program, <laughs> like you name it, okay? There's a ton of different selling um, skills, trainings out there. Really, the only difference that I've found is the vocabulary and the terms that are being used to define the steps or the stages in the process. So for me, I really resonate with the eight-step model. And over the years, I've found that it pertains to lots of different types of industries. Um, and so it's the one I'm going to use for our particular course. But remember, if you've been trained in other um, selling skills or other models, it's not that one is right or wrong. Um, it's just sometimes they're industry specific um, or sometimes they're just using kind of the latest language of the day uh, when it comes to selling. But the truth is selling really hasn't changed in the last hundred years or so. Um, other, you know, as far as the fundamental elements of selling, um, what has changed is the way that we use those skills, because obviously lots of stuff is happening online now instead of face to face. And so we'll address that as we go through this program. Okay, you'll notice on the left side of the screen that you see four primary essentials of selling. And so think about this as um, the essentials or the kind of the 30,000 foot view of what's happening during the sales process. And so those essentials of sales is first creating interest, right? If there's no interest, then there's no need. Next is establishing needs, knowing what the needs of your customers are. Um, then satisfying those needs, hopefully through the products or services that your business offers. And then finally, asking for the sale. Okay, I always like to say um, we get 0% of the sales that we don't ask for, right? So you, you have to ask for the sale um, when you get to the point of the close. And so we're going to step you through all steps of this sales process. So on the right, you're going to see the corresponding steps of the sales process that align with each essential. And so the terminology we use, again, is not nearly as important as to understanding the why behind the order of this process. And that will be my focus as I teach you over the next five sessions, is why do we start with the opening and then gather information, paraphrase, prior to presenting our features and benefits? Why do we do it in that order? And so we'll talk about that in the weeks to come. So next week, we're going to do a deep dive into the opening. And so if you're somebody that gets stuck at the very beginning of the sales process, right? How do you start? What do you say? Then next week is definitely for you. All right, guys, I left a few minutes for questions today. Um, so I want you to go ahead and enter any questions into the questions panel. And while I give you some time to do that, I'm just going to go through some final information. And then I will monitor those questions as we go. All right, the Women's Business Center is made possible through lots of different partnership agencies, but our primary funding comes from the U.S. Small Business Administration, better known as SBA, and then also the Wyoming Business Council. So, of course, we're thankful to them for their support of our program. Here's some contact information for the Women's Business Center. If you ever wanna reach out to me individually, I've got my phone number and my email listed on the screen right now. We also have other business counselors within our program. And then of course our microfinance department, which this webinar is brought to you by and the office number and email for that. These are the upcoming selling skills courses. So like I said, we're gonna be doing this every Tuesday. Um, and so Tuesday, September 15th, is the What Do I Say, where we'll be covering the opening. September 22nd is asking questions to your advantage, and then the 29th, presenting features and benefits. And then we'll have two more sessions in October. All right, guys, let's go over here to questions and see if we have any.
Okay, when you know a lot of people, how do you get them to help you? Laramie is a small community. <laughs> That's a great question, um, Laura. Um, so I'm guessing that you're trying to get people to engage in your business or promote something. And so this is around marketing, you know, versus selling. Um, but I'm definitely happy to, you know, connect with you offline um, to talk specifically about your situation. And we can see uh, what types of marketing strategies you can put in place in order to drive some people to your business. Okay, another one is, can you review the topics for future sessions? <laughs> Can't seem to find them. There you go. There they are. Um, in addition to that, uh, if you go to our website, you'll see the entire webinar series on upcoming events. All right, guys, I really appreciate you joining today. Um, when we close out, I'm going to ask you to complete this survey. And so hope everybody has a great week, and we will talk again next Tuesday.